Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the adventures of Arendil. Now on his first journey into the lands of Elsewhere, home of the Khajiit. Last time we learned that we should go to Corinth for information about the halls of Colossus. Corinth, heart of the province Elsewhere, greets our weary brethren. Find peace and rest within our walls. We have arrived at night, so we best be cautious. Hear the casting of a spell. Oh my. I wonder if that mage was a Khajiit or not. All the Khajiit in this game are portrayed without any feline features, so they are what would now be referred to as the Ohms, or Omez, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But they are a uh, particular first stock of the Khajiit that do not have any overt feline features whatsoever. They just look like, uh, well, very similar to Bosmer, so they look, you know, vaguely like a human or elf. That's based on lore that was later developed, of course. At this point, the lore about Kaji was very simple. There was a little bit of lore about them supposedly being descended from felines. <laughs> you know, it's mentioned that that was part of their sort of cultural history, that they at least have legends that spoke to that possibility. Okay, how do you like a little bit of fire to the face? Not very much, apparently. So, here in Corinth, where might we find the nearest inn? In Daggerfall, they started to portray Khajiit as having tails, so they started showing some feline features, which again, in later lore developments, which are very extensive at this point, especially with uh, ESO, Elder Scrolls Online, um, there's been a lot of further development of uh, lore surrounding the Khajiit and, uh, and this idea of them having many different fur stalks. You know, there are some, like the Alfiq, that look basically like house cats. And there are also some that look like very large cats. Um, they are known as the Sench. And there's also the Sench Rat. Every fur stalk has its Rat variant. Oh, here we go. A couple of inns. The White Griffin. and the Restless Bird. You are greeted by warm laughter and merry talk as you enter the Restless Bird. Torches around the tavern shed light on the warm summer night. Let's chat with some of these Ohms Khajiit. Looks like they'll let anyone into the Restless Bird these days. Well, may you walk on warm sands. I don't mean to be rude, but go away. Fine, these Kaji are not in the mood to talk with me. Um, where is the innkeeper?
rest for six hours. Well, we did find some rest in the restless bird. And now, a beautiful morning. You will notice that in this game the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. It's a funny choice they made, deliberately. Uh, it's not a bug, it, it was a deliberate choice. And uh, they did not keep with that in later Elder Scrolls titles. You know, there's nothing wrong with that choice, but uh, but they understandably did decide that, well, perhaps uh, too many of us Earthlings would find that confusing. Um, and fair enough, I mean, when you're using terms like East and West, that's part of what we expect of the uh, meaning of those words, is that East is where the sun rises. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, start gathering some information. We haven't met, have we? I'm Omurabi Mom, Momnin, the servant. I do whatever needs to be done. Have you heard anything about the Halls of Colossus? A couple of days ago, some priests rode out of here in a hurry. They were chased by a small group from the Mages' Guild. If you ask there, the Magi may tell you more. Excellent. And where is the Mages' Guild? Northeast. Okay. Well, that Kaji did not have the... Uh, Typical Khajiit accent that we expect. Now, what about you, ma'am? Greetings, high elf. This one is Mokhtar Baradavi, a typical cook, and I slap rule for the dear souls of the Conclave of the One. And where is Halls of Colossus? A couple of days ago, some priests rode out of here in a hurry. They were chased by a small group from the Mages' Guild. If you ask there, the Magi may tell you more. The Mages' Guild is a bit northeast of here, I'm sure of it. Any rumors? Some friends of mine went out searching for Staff of Magnus, but they disappeared. The fools. Alright, farewell. Northeast we go. I am so, so sorry that you have to endure my attempt at a Khajiit accent. <laughs> That's probably painful. And uh, we're probably not going to spend any time in the shops here. Or else you might have to hear some jokes about Khajiit has wares, if you have coin. Well, who is this interesting fellow? What is it your business who I am? You better watch yourself, kid. Not everyone in Corinth is as friendly as me. So what do you want? Have you, interesting fellow, heard any rumors about the Halls of Colossus? Okay, same thing. I'll ask around, but I haven't heard anything lately that would interest you. Fine. Well, I believe this is the Mage's Guild. Now, this mage on the outside probably will not be a source of the information we seek, but uh, let's go ahead and save here. My name, you mean? Let me see. Zatabe. Zatabe Sahir, I believe, yes. I am one of the sorcerers to the court of the king. You have a question about my city-state? Hmm. I heard that some priests found something just outside the city. They took whatever it was here to the Major's Guild. I'd check inside for more information. Alright. Fair enough. For a moment, after leaving the bright summer sunshine, your eyes register only darkness in the gloomy Mages Guild. When they adjust, you can understand very little of what you see. Tomes of antiquated wizardry and obscure objects crowd the dusty shelves. Tomes of antiquated wizardry and obscure objects, indeed. 
They even have some that do look kind of like uh, modern microscopes with those red lights shining out. At least that's one way of interpreting that image. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I think that might have been intended as uh, kind of a, a little uh, minor joke or Easter egg, I guess you could say. Um, in any case, too bad we can't interact with any of these things. You are Erendil. Word of your inquiries concerning the halls of Colossus has spread through the city and have come to my attention. I am Turamain of Colthis, Lord Master of the Mages Guild here in Corinth. Perhaps we can help each other. A few days ago, a band of warrior priests from the Temple of Agomanus attacked the guild. They claimed that we had stolen from them a stone tablet that was sacred to their sacrament. In truth, we found the tablet amongst ruins far from here. But their leader, Sir Galindir, must have known the true nature of the tablet. It held the key to deciphering a part of the Elder Scrolls, the part that shows the location of the Halls of Colossus. How convenient! After the attack, my guild was left too weak to retaliate. If you will agree to recover the stone tablet, I will inscribe the location of the Temple of Agamanus onto your map. If you are successful, I will be able to decipher the location of the halls and tell them to you. However, to do this, I need the stone tablet first. Will you agree to help me? <laughs> YN for yes, no, that's really funny. Okay. So in other words, Khajiit has information, if you have tablet. Okay, sure. You are brave and fair, and I humbly thank you for your help. You will find the Temple of Agamanus near Corinth. May the Lady bless your endeavors, and may you fare well on your journey. To remain inscribes the location of the Temple of Agamanus, Sir Galandir's fortress, onto your map. So be it. Farewell. Good Kachi. You know, you could even pretend, if you wish, that some of these Khajiit do have feline features. That could have been an aged feline Khajiit with a great white or silver mane. So let's proceed here to the Temple of Agamemnus. Well, they are starting things off with a bang, aren't they? Shooting arrows at me, are we? Let's go ahead and um, let's do a fire blast first of all. And now some more targeted fire. Still shielded. Let's get you a little bit closer this way. Good. You find a note on this knight's body. You will hold this fortress until my return. Guard the treasures well, or forfeit your life. Sir Galandir. Interesting. A nearby sign reads, Aga Nu welcomes pilgrims. Ah. Agamanus welcomes pilgrims. It's kind of a nice touch that they indicate a damaged sign. Let's go ahead and drop some of our useless items. Not that one.
are these strange noises? Fix that lock easily. And that one as well. Who's casting spells? Oh my. That's not good. We have what I think are called hellhounds or something like that. Let's try to cool things down with a frost spell. Gotcha. As usual, one of you was killed by one of your own spells or your fire breath. Perhaps I will attempt to sleep here. And we still have some shielding, but let's go ahead and boost that again. Might as well go ahead and uh, engage in some wall destroying shenanigans. This is an image I've not seen before. I wonder if these could be images of that Sir Galantir, or of his ancestry, or other people significant to this uh, Temple of Agamemnon. Difficult to say. that was the founder of the Temple of Agamemnon. Who knows? Oh my. Hi there. How would you like a little frost to the face? There are another of you. Hello. Oh my. Yeah. Got a lot of you. Got a 
আছে আর শিল্ডস আর স্টিল হোল্ডিং আপ ম্যাজিক্যাল শিল্ডিং ইজ আ হিউজ বোনাস ইন দিস গেম might be safe to rest up here. Difficult lock here on this one. There we go. trying to recast a spell but i think something went awry it seemed to think i was trying to pull for the or unlock the door hi there <laughs> let's have us a frost spell Let's break on through. And once again. More hellhounds. They are no match for Arendil's mastery of the arcane arts. Hi there. Is there a ghoul nearby? Just looking for a safe place to rest. Relatively safe anyway. find this shocking And yes, I've saved all my best and worst puns for today. More enemies. Come on. Where are you? Ah, cool. 
burn it. Kill it with fire. Secret door. Gotcha. I like that satisfying click of unlocking chests and doors, especially chests. <laughs> doors, I guess, just have the usual door opening sound. Like that. But yeah, the chests have a very satisfying click. Sign over the stairs reads private members only. Is the skeleton a member? And that sign is probably. Well, a sign over the stairs reads private members only. What stairs? Not quite sure what doorway or area that's really referring to, but it's interesting. Lots of secret doors here. Lots of different chambers in general. Like the visual design and the overall layout it definitely does feel like an interesting lived-in place by these cultists and the undead denizens they've raised to help guard it. Well, let's go ahead and use shock. Why not? Now, it could be the case that some of their plate armor might be enchanted, but I don't care about checking all those different pieces. The, uh, well, there's very little need for trying to earn a bunch more gold at this point. A. Redendale is already quite wealthy. Interesting little banners here. Oh, more hellhounds. Who are these people that summon so many hellhounds? I think these ones can be killed with fire, of course, since they tend to kill themselves with their own breath. So fire is fine against them too, obviously. But it does feel more appropriate to use frost. Where's that coming from? Ah, hello. Wow. Let's do a frost blast over here. Oh, 
here just killing themselves left and right. Seems to be a room of some importance. Some kind of altar here. Oh, let's go ahead and save here again. Private members only. Well, we're not necessarily going to respect those rules. Interesting banner. Strange bleeding eye symbol. Rather unsettling. Very interesting place. I can't quite tell what is on these textures on top of these sort of uh, raised platforms. Are those scorch marks or what? Hard to say. Could be scorch marks, maybe burnt offerings or uh, handled here or something like that. Sacrifices to their god or gods or Daedra, whoever they might serve. Hard to say who or what Agamanus refers to. The stench of decaying food fills the air. Let's just go ahead and recast that frost spell. Come on. Is that not working? There we go. Decaying food. Again, that could be because it's food that is just meant for offerings, or or they're just not good at uh, managing their resources here. But that's fun. It's fun to have that flavor text, and it kind of uh, couples well with there being barrels and piles of, you know, sacks of perhaps grain, fruits, vegetables, whatever might be decaying in here.
food. So above these banners, there is the image of perhaps an eagle with its wings spread out. Um, and it's a bit hard to say whether that could be even something like a dragon or a griffin or some other type of creature, but uh, eh, probably just an eagle or a hawk. And we have food cooking here. <laughs> double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Hi there. Yep, something wicked indeed. <laughs> they all died. I am no longer shielded. some potions of restore power just to be on the safe side. So we might not be able to rest for a little while here. Private members only. Okay. <laughs> ah, there we have some stairs. Arendil is a bit curious about what other interesting rooms there might be over here. And up there. So, okay, we'll take a quick gander. And then head down the stairs. Oops, why did I... <laughs> oh, I wasted my magicka. Let's see. Go ahead and drink some more potions. I accidentally recast my shield spell. Here we go. Good old frost magic.
think we might gain experience when we unlock doors, too. to see the skeleton is not immune to frost, I wasn't sure. Seems they don't give too many things resistance or immunity to particular elements. But a few minions do. I don't have all that info memorized, unfortunately, but I should look into it again sometime. on one of these strange altars. As unsettling as that is, it seems to be safe by the logic of this game. Raised platforms are often, but not always, safe to rest on. coffin. Very large. Again, I wonder if this could be some founding member of this temple, or some major figure in its construction, or its history, or the history of the cult that these people follow. Who knows? giant spiders around. Ha! 
Fire Blast took care of all these guys. Someone is casting a spell. Oh my. Some kind of wraith or ghost. I wonder if this water was used for ceremonial purposes. Or it could be just for practical purposes too, but unlikely. All right. So I'm just about done exploring this level. One major area left unexplored right now. And that is north of this altar. I do have mixed feelings about trying to be this thorough about exploring. Because I do enjoy seeing what extra, you know, flavor text and interesting designs there are to see in some of these dungeons. But at the same time, I don't want to be uh, spending too much of my precious time just uh, wandering these large dungeons, you know. I only have so much time for gaming these days. that sound too. It's very nice. And the standard door creaking. Most of the sound effects in this game I actually do like quite a lot. Okay, so resting on this platform proved to be not entirely safe. And now I'm probably stuck in geometry. Come on. There we go. And this sound we're hearing. Spires. those stairs.
open up a path to the decaying food in here. Damp, musty odor fills this area. Okay, we have... Oh my. Let's drink some potions of restored power. Get ready to cast some frost. Ah. Okay, that one took care of itself. We have a very interesting design here. I like the... Uh, Ooh, treasure right there. Inventory's full. I like the golden pattern along the tops of these walls. Very cool. Very interesting. Reminds me of some of the pattern around the borders of the title screen in this game. have four enchanted longswords. So we will be even more wealthy when we're done here, that's for sure. Enchanted plate helm, that's nice. Erendil has a feeling about going in this direction right here. Let's destroy some of these walls. Although we should also try to rest, this might be a safe spot. Maybe. Of course, any spot has some chance of being safe. Oh, great. Stuck in geometry again. And we're hearing enemies, so yeah, resting is not going to be an option quite yet. So we'll drink some more potions. Might as well, you know, make good use of potions because we are wealthy, as we've already stated, so, you know, buying new potions is not a big deal. Interesting banners of swords here, I like that. Once again, we have the eagle motif, which uh, is often a symbol of various, you know, groups that value power. Uh, sometimes it's a symbol of fascist groups. Um, and uh, anyway, it's interesting to see where the eagle symbol pops up, and that's all I'll say about that. Not 
Not that a term like fascism would be in use in this world, but of course they would have a... Oh, there, you know, there would be people of a similar mindset. <laughs> Obviously people in this world would be more focused on concepts like monarchy, empire, theocracy perhaps, you know, things like that. Oh! Hello! <laughs> you hellhounds need to stop killing yourselves, honestly. It's embarrassing. Hmm. Lots of scorched ground here. And one of the doors is a cage door. Kind of seems like they might have kept some hellhounds caged in here, maybe. Perhaps. And, okay, we have perhaps more stairs right there. First I'm going to go this way, back into the room that had some water in it, which once again was pretty interesting. Could just be a source of fresh water for them. Again, it could also be used for, in addition to drinking, <laughs> could be used for ceremonial purposes. Who knows? Oh my. We're not shielded. Now we are. Okay, we'll use the... Oh, potion of heal true. And we'll use some restore power potions. And let's cast some fire. to drop some things again. We might even end up needing to drop some of our enchanted items, but if so, that's fine. So it goes. Oops. Not what I meant to do. some of those ghosts and wraiths. Probably ghosts in this case. Yeah, I remember now what wraiths look like. They're different, but uh, maybe some of these ghosts are deceased members of this cult, this temple. Of... Oh, what exactly is it called again? Agamemnus. Temple of Agamemnus. It's a pretty cool name. Be interested to see if that name has continued to be used in any official Elder Scrolls lore in later games. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, I think especially in games like Elder Scrolls Online, where they're often, you know, almost going to be desperate for additional content to put into their game. Um, it would make sense that they might reach for some of these names and places that showed up in this game. Especially since this game did cover... Oh, we're diseased. Great. This game did cover the entire continent of Tamriel. So there's a lot of stuff to uh, 
to utilize here. Now this is an interesting room. Wow. Now we can't actually go up there. <laughs> we might try to rest here just for fun. No such luck. Yellow fever, cure disease, and look at my stats again. Yeah, I'm really happy with a lot of these bonuses I've got at this point. Magic defense plus seven, plus eight to hit and defend. This is very nice. Um, Obviously, the Agla Infinium helped tremendously with that. But my enchanted items are helping too. Let's go through this slot. Interesting altar. Now, which way to go? Maybe I'll go down and around, and then we'll head up toward that new staircase. Heading deeper into the catacombs of this temple. just as easily destroy these walls that have banners. I assume you can. Oops, not create wall. Destroy wall, please. Yes, we can. Oh, we have a ghost. Spectre hovers over there. And a tombstone right there. Or some kind of strange <laughs> stone obelisk, perhaps. Ooh, we have magma. Lava. Magma, of course, would be, if it were, not risen to the surface. Let me go ahead and cast some levitation. It's going to slow us down a little bit because uh, when you levitate, it bobs you up and down, which is fine most of the time. But when you 
you get up onto these platforms, um, then when it's bobbing you up, it uh, basically means you're uh, bumping up against the ceiling. Oh, come on. Okay, so now <laughs> I seem to be in sort of a tunnel spot. Not a lava spot, that's interesting. And it's not letting me get back onto these platforms. But anyway, yeah, when you're on those platforms and levitating, it's like you're bumping up against the ceiling and so it slows you down. It's a little bit funny. Um, too bad they didn't fix that minor issue, but oh well. Now, we can't, well let's see, we can't rest because there are enemies nearby, but also, even if there weren't enemies over there, he would probably tell us we can't rest because we're floating, um, if I remember correctly. So there are a few things about levitation that can be annoying in this game. But it's still cool that it's at least an option. You know, it's a feature. Uh, one which they uh, expanded into full 3D flight in Daggerfall and Morrowind, and then sadly took away for Oblivion and Skyrim, which I still disagree with. I do not agree with any of the excuses they have for, oh my, this is not good. Levitation is gone, but we're not really taking much damage, maybe because of my shielding. Now, can I not just climb out? What's going on? Why can I not? Maybe I have platforms right over my head. Is that why I can't climb out? Let's see. So I'll cast Levitate again, I guess. I see. Okay. Let's get rid of this ghost. What exactly are you guarding here? What have you guys been up to? These strange cultists. Well, I guess it will let us rest. Why was I thinking it wouldn't allow that? I must be thinking of something else, but there was, there was something strange I noticed once that it wouldn't seem to let you do when you're levitating. It'll come back to me later. Enemies nearby? Where? It's amusing to find gold pieces on a spider. So we're back to this altar room. given us a disease. Thank you so much. Stomach rot. I wonder what that may have affected here. Hmm. Not sure.
podcast, Cure Disease. Get some more shielding going. Beautiful. Nothing here but a brazier. Who's attacking me? Another ghost. to uh, activate the ghost's um, corpse, which is hard to do because they disappear quickly. But it didn't have anything usable anyway. Go ahead and break through here. Here we go. down into the depths of the Temple of Agamanus. Here we go. Okay, so now we're seeing light gray stone walls and floors. Very different appearance here, oh my. More of these guys. Frost Blast. And those ones too. Shed some more light on this situation.
damp, musty odor fills this area. And we have water down below us. Shielding has been used up, so we better cast Arcane Shield 3. Rest. Good. Now then. Might be time for a little swim. Greetings, Hellhounds. Any others? Suppose I'll drop a couple of these plate homes, despite their being enchanted. We need a little more space in our inventory. Strange shape here in this room. Quite a long waterway here. A couple branching paths here. Very interesting. Okay. Hello, spiders. Goodbye, spiders. Let's go this way first. to spiders for now, it seems. So be it. Swimming seems to be the main thing in this game that drains fatigue, which is in red in this game. Original Daggerfall also had health as green, fatigue as red, although I think by default that is swapped in Daggerfall Unity, 
and uh, that is of course to match later games where it is more typical for health to be red, fatigue to be green. Do you believe we had a wraith that killed itself? Now what? Ghoul. Hello, Wraith. How you doing? Can you tell me something about this place? What is this Temple of Agamemnon all about? What have you guys been doing here? Well, you're not much for conversation, but now you may enjoy your rest. been picking up so many items. Some of these are not worth much. Whoops. So we have a bracelet of strength. Not bad, but I do prefer my bracelet of intelligence. We've really been stockpiling a lot of items here. This seemed to be a somewhat formidable force for this region. But uh, they won't be so much now after Arendil's done dealing with them. Come on, this corpse is getting in the way. There we go. Lots of skeletons here. I wonder if that's because they've buried a lot of their dead here in this lower level. Now they guard the temple. Creepy place this is.
Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Interesting patterns. bore through these walls. pit in that room was used for strange sacrifices or other ceremonies, who knows. I believe I'm to where the spiders are now. So I prepare a fire blast.
Hello. Another fire blast. Seems we might have lava over in that direction. It's kind of funny to think that there was a time when Arendil would have had a much tougher time dealing with skeletons. Not to mention ghouls and so forth. oddly patterned. So we found an interesting place. Hello there. Ghouls.
more water. I like that they even have this flavor text for the different types of locks. You know, the fact that uh, it says that this lock has nothing to fear from you, or this lock is an insult to your abilities, and so forth. It's more fun than just seeing, you know, a number or a more simple difficulty description, you know, like a very hard lock or lock level 75 or whatever. You know, I enjoy the effort of putting to real flavor text. It's nice. I mean, it can be unfortunate if it sometimes seems misleading, but uh, that's a separate issue. And what I mean by that is, uh, sometimes it might seem like those descriptions don't really match up with how good your character is or is not at picking locks, but uh, uh, that's a minor issue. You could also say that's Merely an issue of perception, you know, because those flavor texts, they're simply describing the impression that your character has upon looking at the lock. It may not reflect the actual reality. This lock has nothing to fear from you. Are you sure? Bracelet of plus 10 to luck, but we'll stick with our bracelet of intelligence. We have a belt of endurance, we don't need that then.
something is blocking me. Hello, ghost. Don't mind me, I'm just going to pilfer some of your treasure here that you're guarding. deal with this ghost. think you should be able to pick this lock. This lock has nothing to fear from you. Failure. Failure again. This one is a tougher one, but I will get it eventually. There we go. Bracelet of Agility. More skeletons. Oh, come on. Good thing I'm well shielded.
Hello. Answer this riddle and proceed into this vault. I daily am in elsewhere, and in Skyrim, at times do all the world explore. Since time began I've held my reign, and shall till time is never more. I never in my life have strolled in garden field or park, yet all of these are sad and cold if I'm not there, and it is dark. Answer. Well, this is an interesting one, and feel free to pause or skip ahead if you don't want the answer to be spoiled, but I think it might be light. Nothing happens. Okay. Well, it could be the sun. You have spoken well. Enter. Nice. There is the tablet. You have found the tablet Sir Galandir stole from Turamain Ap Colthis of the Corinth Mages Guild. When Turamain has it again, he can use it to find the location of the legendary halls of Colossus. Very good. So we are pretty well done here. Ah, uh, and those walls we probably can't get through with our spells. Um, this area was a bit more heavily protected. But we'll do our best to get out of here quickly now. We've spent plenty of time exploring this place. It's a tiny bit in this corner that we haven't explored yet. Might have time for that, we'll see.
about cast invisibility, just uh, so we can have a smoother escape once we get out of this water. Of course, there are those enemies that are not fooled by invisibility spells, such as ghosts and wraiths and perhaps other undead as well, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I, I think, well, yeah, I guess some undead like skeletons and ghouls, they are fooled, but not the ghosts and wraiths. I think we had explored here before. And... Right. We'll just proceed this way. Explore a tiny bit of this area. Cast it. Invisibility again, good. Alright. Let's get around these spiders. Well, what was that I saw there? Oh, just the lava in the distance. Hello there. Yeah, these ghosts are not fooled. I want to save again just in case. Difficult. I guess that ghost is kind of blocking me from jumping across right there. Stop with the spells, come on. Enough. Oof. Yeah, those spells drain my magicka, it seems. Okay, buddies. I'll just take you out with my knife. My mithril dagger. It's more than a match for you guys. Okay. Well, 
So there wasn't anything too special, but hey, at least we solved the mystery of what was over in this corner. Hurrah. cast invisibility and just move on. Now this game doesn't seem to give you any indication of how close you are to leveling up. That's fine. It's quite a bit of experience I've gathered. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah. They're making this tricky to to get through uh, that door there. Well, might as well just do some destruction of walls. back up. by foul mage. You should not have meddled with Eorendil in his quest to save the entire empire. So we want to get all the way down over there. We do have some unexplored territory here, but I think we're not going to bother with that. Oh, good, the hellhounds are fooled. Where's the door? table or altar there. Moving right along. Hello, ghouls. Ghouls just want to have fun. You know what? You guys need to go. Goodbye. Still invisible. This game is really very generous with its rules surrounding invisibility. But hey, why not? Why should it necessarily be a rule of magic that you can't remain invisible while casting spells or attacking?
sure that might seem to make it a little bit overpowered, but uh, yeah, there's ways around that too. There's other ways to compensate for that. Visibility has been used up. Okay, we're almost there. Visible again. Oh, I can't help it. I'm kind of curious to see if there's anything mildly interesting back here. A couple of spiders. Just tunnels full of spiders. The reason why I do enjoy trying when I can to take the time to fully explore, explore these places. Well, hold on. We have a small plaque here. A small plaque advises, bear left, stay right. Interesting, interesting, okay. Not quite sure how to take that, but all right. Anyway, I was going to say the reason why I do enjoy taking time to fully or somewhat fully explore these places when I can is, uh, well, it's simply a matter of uh, kind of taking the game world seriously. You know, I love getting immersed into these worlds treating them as if they are real places I'm exploring. And uh, yeah, I just enjoy that, so. Plus, even without that element, it's also, as a game designer, it's kind of interesting to uh, analyze what game design choices were made by these designers. You know, I like seeing, you know, what did they do with this corner of this dungeon and why? You know, it's, it's kind of fun to think about that. Like, why, why did they choose to, uh, Put a different design here or put something unusual in this place, you know. Um, I enjoy contemplating all these questions in terms of uh, what was in the minds of the game developers and then also in terms of the in-game reality, quote-unquote, you know, why these things might be that, might, why they might be the way they are in terms of in-game logic, in-game cultures, and so forth. Um, you know, some people enjoy that sort of thing more than others, I suppose. And let's go ahead... Uh, we're not gonna... well... Dang it. Okay, fine. There was just that one room is the only place I hadn't explored yet. I guess I will allow myself to be a bit of a completionist today and go back to check that out. since it's only one room and we might as well just uh, use pass wall to get to it. Now I thought, 
Oh yeah, there was some treasure I hadn't picked up. Because my inventory's gotten full again. Interesting. An altar or table with a blue cloth atop it. And orcs. It's the first time we've seen orcs in this place. That is kind of an interesting additional twist. Why are there some orcs who are members of this temple? Storeroom. Now, what were the Orsimer doing here? Of course, a lot of terms like that Orsimer, Bosmer, Dunmer, and so forth. Those are terms that were not yet in use this game came out. I think they didn't come into use until Morrowind, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so let's finally get out of here. Okay, this is not good. You're out of shielding and out of magicka.
several ghosts. Clearly some kind of unpleasant rituals were planned for this chapter, it says. See, I'm glad I found this flavor text. I think it's interesting that they chose to put that in here, you know. They wanted to make these places interesting to explore. And good for them. Strange pile of debris, possibly bones there. It'd be a miracle if you picked this lock. Oh yeah? Well maybe I believe in miracles. There we go. kind of on that I picked up there. Eh, not very impressive. It's an ominous chapel here. full of ghosts. Let's take a peek here. And hello. Try to rest in this creepy chapel, why not? More orcs. Cast invisibility and move on. Another cauldron, more orcs hanging out. And we'll go ahead. We'll leave these orcs alone. It's kind of fun to see them from different angles like this. We'll leave them alone. And, uh, you know, we'll just uh, nice and unobtrusively destroy some walls. And get out of here. Creepy cool. And 
goodbye. Good riddance. Well, let's get out of here. Goodbye, knights. And back we go to Corinth. Corinth, heart of the province elsewhere, greets our weary brethren, find peace and rest within our walls. And thank goodness we are here in the early morning. We can relax now. Wonderful. So let's see the Mages Guild. I may not have ever marked it on my map, but I think that might be it right there. Good day, Hayel. My name is Amsur Tavakmin, the city-state hunter. I brought fresh wild beasties to the blank. Where's the Mage's Guild? Now I might be wrong, but I look southeast of here. And you, ma'am. They call this one Nani Kabus, the bodyguard. I keep the meaner element out of the blank. <laughs> oh, they really should have been more careful with their, uh, you know, with their use of those uh, uh, variables for holding the names of inns and whatnot. Mage's Guild. Go south for a while, ask there. Here we are. Greetings, Khajiit Mage. The Mage's Guild has given this one the name Mojbil Kabus. <laughs> or, uh, Mobile... <laughs> Mobile Kabus? <laughs> Mojbil Kabus, whatever. To show I am one of their own. What may I do for you, stranger? Do you know anything about... Oh, well, the Mage's Guild, first of all. Yes, let me see your map. It is so nearby, it is easier just to show you. Rumors? The good news is this year's harvest looks as good as last year's. So sure enough, that there is the Mages Guild. And the entrance is a little bit awkward to get to, but it uh, should be right around here. sweat off your brow as you enter the Mages Guild. The cool shade of the interior is a welcome sight after standing under the harsh summer sun. Around you are arcane implements and mystical apparatus. You feel a slight tingling on your skin. We have returned. I see you have recovered the stone tablet. I trust Sir Galandir and his knights did you no permanent harm. Now for my part of the bargain. Wait a moment while I get my notes. Sure enough, Khajiit has information if we have tablet. Turamain gets a feather pen and then peers intently at the tablet. A few moments later, he inscribes the location of the Halls of Colossus somewhere in the province of elsewhere onto your map. Beautiful. So that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like it if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more, and consider supporting me at patreon.com slash the drake. That supports my video production as well as my indie game development. And uh, many thanks to those who are already supporting me. I really appreciate that. I will have some exciting news in the near future about the first games to be officially published by Golden Drake Studios, my indie game development company. And anyway, please do, as always, take excellent care of yourself and everyone around you. As the Kaji say, may you walk on warm sand.